might not be able to see me because I'm behind the uh, screen here. Cool. So yeah, you guys can keep keep your eyes on the PowerPoint. I will be using um, I will be using this uh, little demonstration uh, board here in a, in a sec. But oh, I've got to increase the volume. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Is this is that is that better? Better. Okay. Closer to the mic. All right. Huh? Even more. Maybe there's someone who can increase the volume. Yeah. Okay, well I guess I'm gonna try and speak up as much as possible here. Let's see, let's see. This is a bit better now, okay? Is that better? Is it better now? Okay, I'm just gonna have to raise my voice, that's fine. All right guys, so my name is Eitan Lilfil. I'm gonna talk about uh, creativity and thinking outside the box. So here we go. Um, so first of all, a little riddle for you. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? Anybody know the answer? There we go. I, some kids know this answer. Kids love puns. All right, what's the answer? A carrot. That's right. <laughs> and, and why is that? Why is that joke misleading? Well, yes, yes, it works. And the reason it's misleading is because you think for a sec that we're thinking of, uh, of something that makes a sound uh, like a bird, like a parrot, but actually, you know, we're, we're, the answer is a, is a vegetable. So it's, it changes your point of view. Jokes, jokes do that all the time, and that's part of creativity. It's part of thinking outside the box. Now, computers, you know, they can do they can do a good job at thinking inside the box. They can play chess really well. Um, here's uh, Deep Blue in 1997 playing against Kasparov when he won a, a very very close match. But computers they're not creative, and, and humans we're we're really unique in our in our creative capacity. Even though I guess animals can be creative as well, other animals, but we're we're particularly unique. And actually, when you think about playing chess, it's not that fun to play against yourself because you pretty much know what you're going to do. The beauty of playing chess with other people is they surprise you. They create new positions, and that's that's the creativity. Um, Karpov, former world champion, uh, chess, chess world champion Karpov said that chess is, is everything art, science, and sport. So indeed, chess is very hard to define. In many ways, it is a science, which works well for a computer. It's a sport because you, know, you have to have stamina, you have to have uh, a competitive spirit, and then you have to, to really push yourself to, uh, to get better at it. But it's also an art. There's a lot of creativity, and, and in fact, uh, people like it for, for various reasons. And some chess players actually prefer creative uh, games over winning. So that's cool. Marcel Duchamp. Now, he, he's one of the best known uh, artists of the 20th century. And uh, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but he was also a chess master. And, uh, and he said, and I think it's a beautiful quote, while all artists are not chess players, all chess players are artists. So he believed that actually by playing chess, you're creating, you're, you're, being, you're being creative, and, and that we all have this, this inner, uh, inner ability to create. And in fact, Duchamp, he made, uh, here's a painting of him, a uh, portrait of a chess player. Uh, you can see the painting on the top, uh, top right. And then, uh, I guess for you guys it would be the other side, let's see. Yes, top right, very good. And then he actually created the poster for the, uh, the French uh, uh, chess championship in 1925. And, uh, and he actually uh, he got the master title uh, in that tournament. So he was a very strong player, he even drew Tartakover. And he even designed chess pieces. That's, uh, this is a chess set that, that Duchamp designed. So I want us to think about how it is that we can create, how can we do the unexpected, how can we think outside the box. So here's a, a drawing of the word water. Um, I've got a question for you guys. Can anybody guess how this was actually drawn? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry? Using chess pieces, what? Well, I love that. I think that's a great answer. First of all, let's give a round of applause for that answer. That's exactly what we're looking for here. That's a good one. That's a great answer. There are, there are no wrong answers in creativity, and I think it's important important to remember that. Um, oh, somebody wants to propose another answer. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. What? 
Right? Wire. Wire. Using a wire to like a mesh. Using a wire to Bending a wire, yeah, beautiful. I think I think that's great. And indeed, there are many ways to create. That's uh, what I want to mention. What it is? Sure. Using uh, like a random walk. Uh, you know, so like beautiful. Statistic, yeah. So yeah. very very close yeah. actually. So using a random walk, and actually, it's true that if you just let things happen randomly, you will eventually get any possibility, right? You just have to pick that. So yeah, beautiful. Um, Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, it, you know, it's even said if you if you were to give uh, a monk like many monkeys typewriters and let them just type randomly, after a long enough amount of time, they'll actually you know they'll type out uh, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Unlikely, but with enough time, anything is possible. Um, but actually, this this was created by an artist um, who is uh, uh, his name is Jeremy Wood, and he's he was one of the pioneers of GPS art. So wherever he goes, he has a, a, a GPS tracker, and here basically he took a, a little, uh, a little, uh, little raft, and he pedaled on the water and wrote out the word water, and he just did that with his GPS. It's a virtual drawing, so you don't actually see this on the water. It's only by taking the data and later on showing it on a monitor that you can see it. But he he actually creates a lot of cool art like that. He's even uh, uh, written Moby Dick quotes. And, uh, um, and, and actually, this is a cool piece of his, it's called My Ghost, and it's, it's about a decade of him moving around in London. So you can actually see, see the city streets, you can see, uh, if you look really closely, you can see the Thames. And actually, uh, the thicker lines represent uh, higher frequency, so um, you, know, you can see that he spent more time in the center than on the outskirts. But another, a, a beautiful example of creativity, um, here's creativity is all, always about well not always but usually about being thinking outside the box and appropriating things to different contexts. And here's uh, here's an artist called Brian Jungen who uh, created totem poles out of golf bags and uh, and made, you know recontextualized uh, really how how we think of, uh, of some of these consumer products and that's cool, right? Uh, so it, it is it is all about all about thinking outside the box and. And here I'm gonna, I've got a little, um, a little riddle for what we'll start with. So we've got nine dots, and I'm wondering, um, is there a way to connect these nine dots using four lines? Yeah? All right, so we've got people who think they've got the answer. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm not I'm actually gonna show the answer because we, I wanna, we have a lot to share, and I gotta keep this quick. But first of all, you could try and connect them in, in several ways. So you could try and do something like this. Uh, and there, you can experiment. Here you've got four lines, but they're not touching. Uh, but they do cover all the dots. Can we do, can we connect them all by having them touch, is a question. And actually, if we uh, extend the lines, then they're all touching each other now. And we can actually then think about how to do it in one, one trace. So here, if you look at it, you can imagine uh, the line, let's say, from the outside coming in, going up the diagonal, and then moving, moving to these sides, and then covering everything. So in four lines. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and here you can see it in another another way like this. So covering covering all the dots in four lines. But I've got a question. Can you think of a way to do this in three lines? Interesting. Three lines. That's quite difficult. Um, Really? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to come up? You want to tell me? Yeah. Well, or just tell me? Yeah. Um, you can just go across every um, three, every three dots. Yes, absolutely. So good answer. You can go across every three dots, but can you go? Can you do it in three lines where they're all connected? Because those three lines would not be connected. You want to show me? You want to come show me? Or you think or, yeah? So I've got here, I've got three dots. Oh, I've got nine dots. So here's a black marker. Let's see if we can do it in uh, three connected lines. Ah, but you're not covering all of the dots. But still, it's very good, it's very good, it's very good. First of all, great job on trying. Like I said, there's no, there's no wrong answer, but I'll, I, will show you, I will show you how you can do all, all nine dots in three lines.
So actually, if we were to have this line slightly go down, and then you go really, 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 really far out, yeah, still one think. straight line, you could then come back, and then you'd have to go really, really far out here, there isn't really space, and then you could come back and do it in, in three lines, yeah? So that's, that's another way to do it. Um, obviously this only works because these are dots and not points. Points, you can only do the way we did before. It's only because they have a certain thickness that we can do it like that. Um, but I have, I have a question, is there, is there a better way? Is there an even uh, shorter solution? Three lines. Shorter than three lines. Oh, short, yeah, of course, curves. Ah, does anybody... One line which, which curves. Sorry? One line that curves. Very good, like sir. So, <laughs> very good, so this is a great answer here. A line doesn't, well, usually a line is straight, but you can think outside the box, and, and you can imagine a line that's curvy, and then it, it curves, and it does all that, or even, if you wanted to, you could even have a spirally line. It just keeps spiraling and catches everything, so absolutely, that's a very good answer. And what about, what about with a straight line? Is there a way to do it with a straight line? The cap is for this. Straight line, okay. Uh, yeah? With one straight line. Yes, with one straight line. Huh? One big line. One big line going across the... That's right. So, so actually, yes, that's a very good answer. Um, so let me just visualize this here, and, and, and bravo for that answer. If we imagine the dots getting smaller, now they could be points, but the line getting thicker, these could be really small dots. You guys can't even really see them anymore. And with the th thickness of this line, I'm actually covering all, all nine dots. So very, very good. So bravo. Um, so actually, those are already good answers. Yeah? Absolutely, absolutely, exactly. That, that's absolutely right. Um, so great. So yeah, so that's that's thinking outside the box. And uh, actually, by the way, Nabokov, uh, a great uh, writer, also liked, a uh, great author, he loved chess and he actually created chess prompts, which are very creative. If we have time, we'll come back to this one. But uh, uh, I have another, another little riddle for you guys here first. Um, so let's say you have 12 people and we want to put them in six lines of four people. Um, how can we? How can we do that? So, so let's let's look at it. So, so we want six lines of four people. So we've got twelve people, and we want to create. We want to put them in six lines of four. So, first of all, here are your twelve people, and you can easily do it in uh, in three lines of four. Notice that if I were to try and put a line going from up down, that that would be a line of three. So I'm asking for lines of four people. So here it's only lines of three. But is there a way to arrange this such that we could have six lines of four people? That's, that's the question. Um, and indeed, you'll see that if we choose two people and move them down, all of a sudden you've got, you've got 12 people, but you've got now six lines of four. So I don't know if you can see that, but if you count the lines of four people, you'll see that there are exactly six, solving the riddle. Now, now I'm wondering, we're able to use to create six lines of four people uh, with uh, using 12 people. Is there a way to do it with only eight people? That's that's the question. That's the riddle. If anyone might be able to think of that, it's it's a tough one. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see. So, actually, you could have you could just have people on top of each other. And, uh, and then using eight people in, in bunches of two, you'll see that actually each line here connects four people because they're on top of each other and you've got exactly six lines. So here's a solution, it's a creative solution by putting people on top of each other. You can think of uh, knights riding horses. Um, but again, another example of thinking, thinking outside the box, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's see. We are how we're doing on time. We're running, running low on time. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a silly joke. Uh, 
uh, a guy's talking to his friend. Another example is because jokes are all about shifting your, your perspective. And that's what creativity is. So a guy's talking to his friend and he says, uh, he says, hey, you know, my brother, he thinks he's crazy. He, he thinks he's a chicken. He's crazy. You know, he thinks he's a chicken. So his friend, he says to him, he says, well, why don't you take your brother to, to the doctor or, or the psychiatrist, right? So the guy says, he says, I would, but I really, I don't want to give up the eggs. Right? So, again, change in perspective. Who's who? Who's right? Who, you know, what, what is the truth? In fact, often the truth is very fuzzy. That's, that's the nature of our reality. Jokes, creativity, uh, artistry are all about thinking outside the box. Um, so you have to really encourage flexibility. And, uh, and indeed, by being chess players, we're already artists. Um, all right, actually, and I'll plug something in here for a sec while I'm at it. Uh, there's the Creative Thinking World Championship at the Mind Sports Olympiad. Uh, it's, a, it's a one afternoon uh, event. If anyone's interested, it's open to all ages, and there are a lot of crazy questions there, uh, which have uh, no, uh, no unique answers, so any answer is correct. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks,